think we're in. I think we're on, Rocket. We are live. We are live to the world. Live. Wow. I think I need to fanboy out just a little bit before we get <laughs> go too far into it, Rocket. I need to, as far as I can remember, thinking back to Sky Sports when I was in my teenage years, I can always just remember you were there. I don't, I, I mean, can you remember those first shows? I can't remember back that far, <laughs> but I just know that you've been there with Techers and, and traveling yeah. around and everything else. It's, it's been a, it's been a long old journey. Yeah. Uh, well, Soccer AM has been going for a long time. I wasn't actually there right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, Soccer AM was a little bit more like uh, Goals on Sunday. It was a bit more serious. It was presented by Russ Williams and Helen Chamberlain. Mm. And, and I joined, I think it was two seasons after Lovejoy took over. So um, it, I, I'll go right back to day dot. Yeah. Uh, so it all started for me with work experience. Uh, I got offered, everyone got placements at school. So I'm in, the, I'm in the year 11 at school. Uh, yeah, I know I'm, I'm year 10, so I'm 15. Year 10, so, 15. So what, just, just, just for a little yeah. check here. I'm 39, so you're, I'm going to say you're a similar age. I'm 37. 37, okay, yeah. all right. So you were two years below me, wow. That, <laughs> because years ago, when I, when I was going through college, so I was two years ahead of you, and I was thinking college. I always wanted to do this. I did media and all that stuff. Mm. So you two years younger were like, you know, I did, I did my work experience in a, in a builder's place, <laughs> really wanting to be in Sky Sports. But, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's brilliant. So, so, talk to, so, so you did the work experience but you thought right I'm going to get into this is my chance to try and get well, into Sky. Well yeah I mean the school the school weren't great at, at kind of placing kids where they wanted to be it was kind of this is what we've got who wants this who wants that so I originally got off for two weeks in an ice cream van that was my placement it was like right you've got an ice cream van two weeks I was like well I don't want to be an ice cream van seller but that's not my, where my passion is so I was, I was chatting to a few of the lads and, and kind of seeing what they had. Um, my mate, Dean, he, he was like, oh, I'd love two weeks in an ice cream van. Quite a big lad. I was like, have it. You can have it. I'll sort my own out. So I, I told the school that I was going to sort my own out. They were like, fine. So then I had to try and find something. So it was a case of, um, with the help of my mum, 15, I've written off to Meridian, Sky, uh, Ginger Productions, ITV, Channel 4, literally every production agency out there. I wrote the letter, jazzed it up, put a picture of myself, kind of made it all colourful, um, said what I was interested in, sport, production, uh, listed a few of the shows that I liked that they produced to show that I was kind of, I knew what was going on. Um, and no one got back to me apart from Sky Sports and said, we don't normally accept students under the age of 16, but we love your letter. You've obviously got a bit of personality in there. You've mentioned that you like Soccer AM. Come in do two, week, two weeks with us and see how you get on. So that was it. Unbelievable. It's, un it's um, unbelievable even to have the foresight or even, to be honest, the balls to even say, you know, have a chance to do that because you think, oh, all the people that must apply. Yeah. And I didn't have the foresight for, you know, that sort of age to kind of a, a, apply. And lots of other people didn't. It just shows that he who dares wins. That's it. I just thought I've got nothing to lose here. I don't really fancy two weeks in an ice cream van. What else can I, what can I do? So... Literally, had, had you thought a lot about TV and production before not, that? Was that on your mind? Not massively. Um, I'd already, I'd always been allured. I've always, I've always kind of the excitement that went with TV appealed to me. The fact that you know, especially with Soccer AM, they had only started two two seasons prior to me joining. I saw the fun that the boys were having on the show, you know, and I just thought, oh, I just want to be there and have have a laugh. I didn't take myself too seriously. I was always a bit of a class clown, a bit of a joker. So I, I, I wasn't very academic, you know. I was kind of like, but I was good at drama. So drama and art, so I was more creative. So I thought TV is probably the best place for me to go and have a bit of fun and learn on the job. And then that was it. Yeah, so, so they said, look, come in, do your two weeks. The two-week work experience that I did have at Sky was quite boring because I spent most of the time in the edit suite just watching people cut cricket, cut golf, you know, sports that I wasn't massively into. I was, I was more football. Um, but on the last day of my work experience, I met the Soccer M team, got introduced. Well, I introduced myself, actually. I went up and I was quite ballsy at 15. And, well, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is it, yeah. You've got to have a little bit about you to go, right, you know, let's, let's go and have a chat with these guys and see where it takes me. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, I was, 
a little bit cheeky, um, you know, classic 15 year old thinks he's, thinks he's it, you know? So I went in, introduced myself as rocket cause I've been called rocket since I was six years old. Cause I used to be fast runner in a team full of James's, which is my real name. So my manager was like, look, I can't, you'd shout James would all look around. He was like, right, this is, got to give you all nicknames. One lad got Vinny cause he played like Vinny Jones. And then it was Jimmy, Jamie, James, rocket. <laughs> cause I was the quickest. Um, so I went with the name rocket, um, introduced myself to Lovejoy. He went, come in rocket. We're trying to think of some new ideas for the new season. What you got? He went, I'm, I'm thinking of doing something like uh, Helen's box where every week we go into Helen's box and pull something <laughs> else. <laughs> and, out. and I went, and I went, yeah, yeah, that's good. Or, or Helen's big chest. And he went, I like the way you think. And that was it. That was just one idea. Just went, oh, Helen's big chest. And obviously you get away with it back then in the, in the nineties. Yeah, God, that was. I mean, I, I think I think getting into Helen's box is, is also pretty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's also an interesting idea. I know. Um, Helen's so, chest, brilliant. So it was so that, we, and and so the other you, idea was um, did play they your go players. with that? Did they go with that idea in the end? Uh, they didn't go with it in the end, but it would, they were just bouncing ideas off each other and, and kind of think trying to think of ways to make the show a bit more fun and ideas that we could introduce. Another almost, one that, but almost they, that uh, was enough in like in Tim's mind. That was it to to go. This guy's got something. He's first, gonna have more. He's gonna have more of a good idea. First wow. ten minutes of meeting him, I'd I'd offered an idea, and he was like, "That's what we need." He uh, he, he always said that he kind of saw something in me that he saw in himself a little bit, um, which was which was nice because obviously he's brilliant at what he does. Um, so yeah, so that was it. I was kind of I was asked if I wanted to work for free during the summer. So my work experience ended, but then Tim was like, we, will, we want Rocket to come and work on the show as a work experience, as a runner, um, for free um, during the summer. So when I wasn't at, at school, I would come in Saturday mornings up at five o'clock. Mum and dad would take it in turns to drive me up to, to Sky in Isleworth. Um, and then I'd do the show and be making teas for the likes of Noel Gallagher and, you know, hanging wow. about with Ray Winston. In the, in the, and it was honestly, it was unbelievable. Um, and I buzzed off it. It wasn't about the money. It was about being there in the environment. Um, and I did that for three years unpaid. So a lot of people are but like, almost what full time. For no, three just, so, so three years, just working Saturdays, Saturday okay. boy, just turning up. Basically they couldn't get rid of me. Once I was in, I was, I was willing. I wanted a graph that was keen. Um, and, and that was it though. I was there on, I think it was about... I, I bet that was the day you look forward to more than anything all week. Oh, You're I just thinking, it. all I want to do is be at that studio, paid, non-paid, just get me there. So Because you'd pro you know, probably even see back then, if there's a chance that you could end up producing or presenting or whatever, you know, that's, that's a career. It was, just, it was at that time as well where, because of the nature of Soccer AM, it was kind of anything goes. It was organised chaos, you know. Um, so one minute everything's going smoothly, and the next minute a VT doesn't roll or a guest doesn't turn up or a prop falls from behind the set and crashes. I became the, the whipping boy. It was rocket. That's your fault. You sacked. So it became a, an on running gag that whenever you, anything went wrong in the show, they would get, throw the cameras on me, 15 year old headset on, you know, and it would be like rocket, you sacked, get off. So it became a running joke every week when something went wrong, it was sat rocket. Um, and then that was it. I kind of, I became a, a kind of character on the show, uh, and then I got trusted with more bigger roles with lines. And and before I knew it, I was in the lockers, dressed as Eminem or you know Sonia from EastEnders or whatever I was doing. Um, and then it kind of snowballed. Right, right. So we'll come to this in a second. Ross has asked me to do you, for you to do your Sonia impression. <laughs> <laughs> so shout uh, out to Ross. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Ross. <laughs> um, so, so um, do you remember that first time they said, right, we're gonna, we're gonna, you're going to be on? And was it live or was it recorded? It was live. No, it was live. And that, oh. was, back, that was back in 98. It was a four-hour live show. So imagine four hours of live TV. They're just so much airtime to film. And we was in a tiny little studio. It was the size of a bedroom. And we had three cameras that would literally swivel on a point. You know, that, that were your lockers. That was your set. And it was like everyone moved with the cameras. So... Um, yeah, my first ever proper on-screen appearance was actually, I think it was with Noel Gallagher. What? What? Noel Gallagher was on the show. That is ridiculous. And Tim used to do a magic trick every Saturday. It was like, right, time for the Chorleywood Stoplight Entertainer, my magic trick. Um, and this week's magic trick was, uh, he had a cylinder over his arm 
with a spike that used to stick through it. Uh, and then there was a blood capsule and it would pull with blood and then you pull it out and go, ah, you know, magic. Um, and he went, before we do this, I have to test it on the work experience rocket. And then I had a bandage with a blood stain on the top and the bottom. And I had to say, please, Mr. Lovejoy, not again. And that was my one line. And that was it. That was my one bit of my mum and dad recording it. And the, they phoned me up after the show. We saw you and all the excitement and, you know, just even being in the background of shot, they, it, my mum and dad used to record every show and get really excited about it. So yeah, it was good times, fun times, but nerve wracking at that age because you didn't want to mess it up. Yeah. And, and then how did that then evolve from that a few lines here or there into kind of, you know, some of your bigger ideas, you know, techers and then everything else that you did, because it then morphed into something quite incredible. Yeah. Well, um, obviously being there from such an early age, you, you get to see what works and what doesn't work features that die and features that are successful and people seem to love like cross by challenges, your third eyes. Um, so I was just there a long time. I, I kind of, I got officially employed at 18 as an office runner. So I wasn't actually um, working for soccer AM at that point. I did a year just cleaning edit suites, um, like getting tapes and sorting out the mail room for sky. And then I did a year of that and then love joy. We need rocket on full time. So I came over and did props, which was one of the hardest jobs I've, I will ever do. Uh, 18, 19 year old doing props. There were so many costumes and wigs and tashes and, you know, Tim would be like, right, uh, this week we're doing a jungle gag. So I need, I need a fake snake. I need, you know, trees. And then it was my job to source. This was like pre-internet as well. So, <laughs> you know, I had a phone book, prop it up, like calling them wig store, just n nothing was online. It was all yellow pages or, or, or using your contacts from people that add numbers. And so it was really hard graft. Um, we, um, we, we were talking just a second ago that the, um, it's before we went live and that people don't realize how many hours you had to put in and work. You know, oh, yeah. like, you know, you film on the Saturday, well, what else are you doing during the week? But you're doing all this, you're preparing to make the show. This is it. You know, and you're working really long hours. So we would work Tuesday to Saturday. Um, Tuesday would always be ideas, ideas day. So we'd get in about 10 in the morning. Everyone would come in uh, from watching the weekend's football with notes and ideas or features we could do on the show, guest shouts, um, taxi nominations, third eyes that we'd seen. Um, and Tim was quite shit hot on making sure that you had ideas. You couldn't just fade away or hide in those meetings. You'd be like, right, Rocket, what are your ideas this week? And you'd be like, um, so my first idea is... And then you, you'd kind of work through your list and you'd be like, nope, nope, nope. Might be something in that. You know, one out of the ten. Oh, yeah. And these ideas are normally like funny comedy type things or yeah. kind of feature-y type. Feature ideas, comedy. It, was, it, it didn't matter as long as you had something to add to the show. You know, for example, Topless Weather with Sheephead. It was, has anyone got a gag for Sheephead? what can we do? And then, you know, you'd come up with something uh, like a, a joke that you'd seen somewhere and you say, well, what if we do this? And you'd be like, he either liked it or he didn't. So I learned pretty quick how to think on my feet and constantly generate ideas from not a lot, um, which has put me in good stead to, for what I do now, really, because it's a lot, a lot of it's creative and, you know, thinking outside the box and how can we get the best out of this person? Um, so yeah, it was, it was, um, it was tough in those ideas meeting because he was brutal and you didn't want to be the one to be kind of gunned down and told your ideas rubbish, but it was very kind of cutthroat in that instance. It was like, if your ideas aren't good enough, he would tell you and he'd be like, right next week, I want better ideas from you or, or else kind of thing. And not, not kind of threatened with your job, but it was implied a little bit. Like if you don't step up, we'll get someone else in. So that pressure was always there to deliver good ideas. What about some of those ideas that really did start, start yeah, at so, the very beginning? So um, obviously I joined where the show had pretty much already been formed with your, your tockerettes, your taxis, your nutmeg files, showboats, all of that. Um, I was there when um, it was actually Sheephead, I think, that came up with the crossbar challenge, uh, which went, was so popular. One of the most popular things we did on the show because people could recreate it. They would go down their local park and they'd, they'd send in, well, 
VHS videos, actual videos of them doing the crossbar challenge. Mm. And we'd, someone would have to go through them and clip up the best bits. And so, um, so yeah, ideas was a big thing for soccer. And we had to keep evolving, especially when we had four hours to fill. It's a lot of time. So we need to be constantly coming up with new ideas and things we could do. So, so yeah, so from my point of view, um, obviously skill school was one of the ones that I came up with. Um, we did a feature called bad language, which wasn't really football related. It was just me and one of the other lads dressed as, um, well, chav- chavvy girls from Hounslow. And we talked like that in it, like, Oh, shut up Zoe. And we, we would act out characters and I'd write the script for that. I'd, f- I'd direct it. I'd star in it, produce it. And then it was my job to kind of, at the end of the week to go, well, this is what I've done and show Tim and he'd either like it or he wouldn't. So it was, it was really hard. And, and then from there, you then started going on to quite, quite major parts. And the fact of, you know, you traveled, you Cap Camp Bastion, you went to Mombasa. Yeah. How did that then turn into you doing, you know, you traveling and doing quite major parts of the show? Well, I'd always been a bit of a bit part character. Um, when Lovejoy was producing, presenting, you know, I'd be brought in for a small gag, for example, where Tim would have a small tennis ball. Someone would throw a tennis ball at Tim and he'd be like, who's throwing that? Rock it. And then he'd throw the tennis ball at me and it would cut to me catching a giant tennis ball. You know, obviously the small gags were peppered in the show. Um, So that was kind of, I was a little bit of a, you know, um, a joke character uh, in the early days. and then Lovejoy left and took a lot of the Soccer M crew with him. So okay. I was kind of one of the originals that was left with Tubes and Helen. So me, Tubes and Helen were the kind of only three that were left. The new producer came in and was like, well, we want to keep the essence of what Soccer AM is. So he kind of used me and Tubes and Helen to do more things. Uh, and then opportunities came up and they were like, right, we need someone to go to Afghanistan um, to raise morale during Christmas for the troops. And we want to send you rock. And I was like, wow, like, unbelievable. That is an honour, right? Yeah, it was. It really was. I did 10 days in Camp Bastion with Jeff Shreves and the Premier League trophy. Uh, and, you know, a live broadcast from Afghanistan with a 10 second delay. It, that was where I, I, I learned a lot. And what, what, uh, what were you doing for those 10 days? We're obviously broadcasting, but what were you doing with the, with the troops and all the people out there for that, that period yeah. of time? So we, we would go down around the, diff- around the camp um, to different sections. You know, we'd go and speak to the front line, the guys that were on the front line, which was a real eye-opener, um, like brave, brave guys. You know, the stuff that they would see was, it was quite haunting, really, some of the stories that I heard. Um, and and we would, they took us up in a Chinook helicopter and, you know, we got to ride around in a tank and went to um, one of the... Um, they, they would make, um, it was like makeshift markets they would make within, within Camp Bastion for training purposes. Um, so they'd have like a lot of Afghan buildings there that were a bit derelict and, and they'd do a lot of training there. So they'd teach us like what they would do in a situation, you know, if I was to be taken hostage, how they would, you know, they would, they would show us how, what they would do. And it was, it was honestly, it was unbelievable. Um, and it was great for me because a lot of the lads then watched Soccer M. Soccer M was a very popular show. Um, so they all wanted a photo and I got a lot of attention. It was lovely, you know, they, and it did seem to take their minds off of what was going on, you know, the, the brutalness of, of war. It's quite um, scary for you to think you're, you're going to travel out there and you know what? You know, where you're going to be in a, in a war zone. I was, I was really nervous going out because it was actually the day of my sister's wedding that I flew out. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of praying that it's not going to collide with my sister's wedding because it's her biggest day. I'm an usher. And, and then I had to leave her wedding early to, to go and get a flight uh, and, and fly over to Camp Bastion. So it was, there was a lot of emotion at that time because, you know, everyone's worried for me. It's my sister's big day. And, you know, and I'm going off to Afghanistan for 10 days. Um, I didn't really feel nervous in, until I had to put a bulletproof vest on then it suddenly became very real. Oh, that is a, that's a moment, isn't it? Got the bulletproof vest on with press written on it. I'm in this, I'm in this uh, aeroplane uh, and I'm with 30, um, 30 soldiers, 18-year-old soldiers that are going to war for the first time. So you can imagine the fear that they've got, the adrenaline. You know, I'm, just, I'm not going out to fight, but I'm there with them. It's heads down. It's a green light on. You know, we're all kind of, 
back to back packed in um and with this plane they they said right just to let you know we're gonna we're gonna nosedive in to land so it's not like a, a normal kind of normal flight back from lanzarote where you kind of just cruise down you're up high and then it's like straight down uh, and then wow. it was a case of the door opened and it's like go 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 everyone out it was like being in a film it was honestly it was just like and that was when i started to feel oh shit this is it's not messing about now this, this is real real life real yeah yeah but i, I didn't feel like i couldn't have felt safer once i was there you know the guys were brilliant they looked after us we had our own media tent where um i think there was 10 of us in the media tent you got the sound guys the cameramen me shrevesy um premier league trophy got its own little spot um so yeah, and and they were brilliant. You know, they they made sure that we were well looked after. But there was there wasn't a lot of downtime. It was literally right. You land, and it's like let's get kitted up. We're going here first. They wanted to make the most out of the trip, so it was full on. But one of the best things I've ever done. Sounds incredibly rewarding. Oh, it was. And scary. Yeah. All, all at the same time, and and something no doubt you'll you'll never forget. No, definitely not. It's incredible. No. And 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 then. Also, then you travelled to, to Mombasa as well. Am I must right in saying you've been there a couple of times? Yeah, I went there twice. Went to Mombasa. Um, it was uh, this was uh, one of the ideas that I had actually um, after Lovejoy had left. It was um, I knew a guy who was running a charity called Glad's House, and he was trying to get shirts and football boots and kit out to the kids in Mombasa who had nothing, um, just to get them off the streets and into football, because they had a big problem in, in Mombasa of um, young children sniffing glue um, because it, it, um, it suppresses their hunger. So wow. for, for a dollar, you can, you can either eat for the day or you can buy glue that will suppress your hunger for a week. So a lot of these kids, oh, I mean, honestly, I, that is, I saw... That is I saw, unbelievable and frightening. You know, I heard some horrific things in Afghanistan, but I saw horrific things in Mombasa. Uh, really kind of breaks your heart when you see like a seven-year-old kid who's got nothing you know his parents are he's orphaned his parents have probably died from aids or or some horrific reason that they're not around and he's on the streets and you know he was i saw this kid and i'll never forget it he took a big sniff of this glue and just passed out on the street and i was just like something needs to be done here like what what can we do anyway we, we come up with this idea to um a shirt a shirt appeal so we were said look any old football shirts you've got, send them in and, and we'll ship them out to the kids of Mombasa. Um, we, we were inundated with shirts. We got so many tons of shirts, like more shirts than we knew what to do with. I bet, yeah. Um, and the great thing about these shirts is you're probably thinking, well, what good shirts to a street kid? But they were used as currency in the fact that they had a, um, a, a dirt pitch that was kind of like just a couple of goalposts. Um, but they would say to a couple of the street kids, look, if you cut the grass, paint the white lines, fix the nets, we'll give you a couple of football shirts. And that enabled some street kids then to just forget about all their problems for an hour and play football and just be like a normal kid. And it was that relief. And also it meant that they, um, they did a thing called um, papasa, which meant that the kids got fed and watered for the day as well. So um, it was a guy called Bookie who, uh, who run Glad's house. And he would bring the kids off the streets. He would feed them, water them. They'd play football for an hour and then they'd go back. And the only rule was no glue. Um, so, so, yeah, so, you know, it was just unbelievable. The amount of money that was raised, I think it was like 70 grand in the end that we managed to raise. Wow. Um, for, and they, they managed to build um, an internet cafe, a bike shop, um, you know, set up businesses to, to help these street kids, you know, earn a living. And, and give them a chance, basically. So do, so, do, do, you, do you find, you know, do you think going to that, that sort of place mm. so early on, do you think that changes you in some ways? In, oh, in, yeah. In, in the matter of gratitude you have to be fortunate oh, to be growing up in this country. Definitely. I, or, you get bogged down with life. Life can be tough. It can be, you know, with suffer, um, people suffering with mental health. It's, it's easy to understand why they suffer because it's relentless. And it, But, yeah. I now have to have a bit of a reality check and I'm like, look, you know, let's, let's, let's get a grip here. Mm. There are, there are kids like that are really suffering, um, getting beaten by police, seen as, seen as a pest on the streets, no help from anyone. 
so yeah it does it does change you i think it does ground you and makes you realize just how lucky you are really to be born where you're born and and you know have the opportunities that you have so yeah it's um it was definitely an eye opener for me and something that i'll never forget and you, and you went there twice so what was what was both of those visits so, what was the second one so the first time was just to kind of get um an idea of what's going on and how the shirts have helped um the lives of the street children uh, and how the viewers made a difference basically this was the great thing we could we could show the viewers the difference that they'd make just by sending in a football shirt so that was I, the first time i think that's the thing right it's because you know some of us you know p- people donate to charities and mm. those types of things but but in some I'm not saying that we we, we want to see the benefit but we want to see what's happened why why of that course. has benefited and, yeah. and i think that's that's the thing, key thing to get across because if you show that and mm. people are going to donate more because you know Definitely. we are fortunate in this country. And, people want um, to help. Yeah, people but do. But what they uh, don't want to do is feel like their charity money is going to pay someone's wages. Or, and that's it. You know, it. They want to see a difference for that child's life. They want to help that child. So for us to be able to go out and film it and say, look, you know, you've sent us these shirts. These kids are buzzing off these shirts you've really made a difference here. You, you're showing them that football isn't just a sport. It's actually a way of, of kind of getting them off the streets and, and giving them a focus and giving them purpose. Uh, and that's why it was so rewarding. Second time I went out there was um, they, they'd invested a lot of the money that was made into um, a shelter uh, for these street kids. Uh, and it was, um, it was in the process of being built, but there was going to be shower facilities and beds and somewhere where they could kind of, be safe, you know, uh, and feel like, you know, they could, they could work and they could, they could get fed and they could be looked after. So that was the second visit. Um, so yeah, very rewarding. I, mean, I always look back. Um, I think, I think, yes, yeah, so that's what it sounds like. You're, you're going to probably look back at that and go, that's probably one of the most rewarding yeah. things you've done o- over that, that period. What, what would you say on the other side was one of the most exciting things you did at Sky? Because looking back, you've met all these people. You started yeah. off working, you know, with some of the greats at the very beginning, you, you know, Helen and Helen Chamberlain, Tim Lovejoy, and of course, all the footballers that you've been engaged with. I mean, what do you, is there some really great high points you remember? Yeah, I, um, obviously, because I, I was the, the youngest, I was, I was a bit like the soccer AM mascot in a way, you know, I'd, I'd dress up as lobster boy as well and bring the footballs out for the end game. So a lot of the attention was very positive because I didn't take myself too seriously. You know, I'd let everyone rip me. So although people felt that they knew me and that they could take the Mickey as well, there was another side where it was like, actually, I'm in a really cool place here. And like the Badgers, for example, the soccer AM football team, we would travel the country, um, I remember going to Newcastle one time where I actually stayed in the hotel room with Helen Chamberlain. Um, and, you know, being a 17 year old, I was like, what is going on? I mean, I'm in the same room as Helen in a hotel. Um, it was unbelievable. So, um, and then like everyone's chanting the catchphrases that we've got and people knowing your name at like 16, 17. And I'm like, this is surreal. I remember the first time actually getting recognized was probably, um, it was, it was, I was skiing in France with my family and I had my goggles on hat scarf and some guy on the chairlist sat next to me and went you work on soccer AM and I was like how does this guy know who I am and that was when I suddenly thought oh my god this is like this is big this is a got a big following um but yeah Badgers games were great um I got to turn on the Christmas lights for a house in Stoke um a house <laughs> yeah for a house yeah actually it wasn't in Stoke it was um it was in Bristol. I turned on a family's house, big, big house with ma- amazing Christmas lights. Uh, they had about 300 people turn up and, and I was, it, it was a competition to win me to turn on your Christmas lights. <laughs> That's pretty- so, so it was like, right, you can win rocket to come and turn your Christmas lights on. So I went to Bristol, turned on their lights. And then the next year um, I went and <laughs> so mad Stoke city got in contact and they went, we want rocket to come and turn on our Christmas lights at Stoke. That's brilliant. So I'm there with Angus Deaton, Father Christmas. Uh, who else was it? Uh, I think it was um, one of the boys from Five, maybe. And, and just me. And they were all stood off. And the presenter was like, right, guys, it's time to do the lights. And they were, and the button was there. So I was like, all right, so I'll do it then. And then 
I turned on Stoke's Christmas lights. It was just, just like it's surreal. It's so surreal to go from working experience to turning on the lights at Stoke. It's mad. Absolutely and mad. In what time period? So how, what was the, because you've gone from work experience to kind of celebrity-ish status. It was, it was about three years in, three or four years in. Brilliant. Um, that, that that happened uh it was just one of the ideas in the ideas meeting it was like why don't we just give rocket away as a prize it actually <laughs> they'd done it once before um it was like i can't remember what the competition was but it was like right this week you can win rocket to come and do diy jobs around your house so a guy a guy from preston won me so i do a video diary of my trip up to preston um and he had me hoovering his house cleaning the curtains i had to carry him down to the shops on my back things like that uh and they did a live two-way with me during the show they went right last week you remember that we uh we gave rocket away as a prize he's now in preston uh in some guy's house rocket a getting on and then i was there in preston as you know 17 years old um so they, and it was they thought it was quite funny so they did it again um around christmas so yeah I don't know if you're still doing stuff like that, but my wife really wants uh, wants you to come around and do a load of work around the house. So. <laughs> yeah, my missus has been trying to get me to do that for ages. So, no, it's, uh, I'm not not very domesticated like that, unfortunately. I try. I've actually cleaned my bedroom today, so I'm in I'm in the bedroom. Oh, are so, you? Uh, yeah, because um, Litland's teething, so he's kicking right off today. So I have how, to try and. How old? How old is it? He's fi- it's Mason. He's 15 months old. 15 so, months. Yeah. So that, is that your first? It is my first. Yeah. Has, has, has it been com- becoming daddy it's been brilliant i love it uh it's just such a game changer for me you know he's just he's just brilliant he's just he's already he's already love it he's already his football he's dribbling already <laughs> not, not for his mouth but actually with the football um although he uh he got a bit of a telling off at nursery today for biting someone so uh really a bit, of, yeah. a bit, of, a bit of diego costa in there somewhere he has yeah a bit of suarez so Suarez, he's, uh, yeah. yeah. So he's, um, yeah. So, but no, he's great. He's great fun. He's just, um, he's just a bundle of energy at the moment. So um, we are, um, we're expecting ours. So at first, we're oh, yeah. expecting our first baby in uh, in October. So we got married oh, last year. Congratulations! Man. And um, so Lena's five, six months. I can't five, five months pregnant. So yeah. she's very comfortable at the moment, especially with some of the hot weather. Do you having. know what you're having yet, or you know? No, we don't no. know. No. Yeah. Um, Everton yeah, fan, um, nonetheless, <laughs> which, whichever, whichever sex we go, Everton. See, fan. well, you say that because um, my, my this is this will make you laugh. My um, my wife was actually a soccerette. Oh, really? <laughs> so, um, oh, we met wow. on the show. Yeah, we met on the show. <laughs> That's brilliant. Perks of the job. Um, but I um, I got chatting to her and we just hit it off and we dated for eight years and then I finally proposed and. The funny thing is, though, right at the beginning, um, she was hardcore Man City, like proper Man City fan, go to every game, home and away, loved her football. And uh, she asked me who I supported. And I knew that I wouldn't have a chance if I told her I was a United fan. No, um, so you've I, not lied. Well, I actually, I used to have a season ticket at Brentford. I used to go and watch Brentford play quite a lot. Um, so at the time, it wasn't technically a lie. I was supporting Brentford. What she didn't know was my main team was United. So it wasn't it wasn't till about three months into the relationship that I told her that I was uh, a filthy red. Uh, she wasn't happy. I uh, mean, you, start, you started off with a lie. Quite yeah, a big one. I know. It's not good, is it, for the relationship? The good foundations starting on a lie. But she forgave me. But now we've got the predicament in the fact that oh, we've got a little boy. Who does he support? Is he a United fan or is he a City fan? It's you know? such a such a household to, to be growing up in. This is it. Well, the wife's quite good. She's she's like, look, you know, I don't mind if he's a United fan. And I was like, yeah, but is he going to have more enjoyment being a City fan? I would you just choose I mean? Brentford if I was the child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be like, I just, yeah. just let me. Just not, I don't want to have to choose between mum and dad. Yeah, and Brentford are on the up as well. So yeah, yeah you know. Right, and also choice. probably get to go to see Brentford a little bit more often. Based, True. Based True that. Exactly. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Right. Any 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 fatherly advice going through the first uh, the first? I'm still learning, to be honest. It's um, all I can say is you're gonna make sure you catch up on your sleep before you have a baby because we've had a lot of a uh, lot of late nights. To be fair, the the wife's been brilliant because I'm up normally before lockdown. I was up and out quite early. 
um, and back fairly late, um, she would take charge of him a little bit and kind of get up at three in the morning to make sure he's okay and stuff. Um, I just, it's just the best thing ever. I can't, you know, if you're thinking, I'm in mean, an hour and about having kids and not sure, I'll just, you've just got to go for it because honestly, it's so rewarding. You know, the, I remember he, he um, it was about a week before his first birthday and um, he just seemed really kind of engaged with me and switched on. And I said to him, say hello. And he hadn't said a word. And he just went, hello. As clear as day. And I was like, oh my God. He just said hello. And I said, say it again. Say hello. And he, he wouldn't say it. But he said hello. And I was just like, it just blew me away. I was just like, wow. First time I'd heard his voice, you know. Uh, and now I've actually got him. Um, he's so close to saying football. He said football. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, it's just brilliant, mate. I'm loving it. So you've got all this to look forward to. You'll be there whispering and you're going, United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, yeah, say yeah. United. Come on, your reds. Come yeah. on. Say United. <laughs> you want to be a little devil, don't you, red one? <laughs> wow. So yeah. we, we should fast forward to, to your uh, your time at Joe. Yes. How did uh, I, I read a really really great press release earlier when you signed for uh, for Joe and it, and it was re- written in they've poached you they brought you across <laughs> and you're going to come and lead the team just 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 they would do as if uh, if you were a soccer player football player being uh, being transferred what what was that transition like because of course you went you you went all over to to lead the team effectively and then produce the content and you know you, you sort of went there a bit of a, as a superstar really at that stage. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> um, Joe was still um, fairly unknown in in the main media, in the main in in the main like platforms of production companies. It was still kind of fairly unknown. But um, I liked the stuff they did on the website. I'd always go onto Joe's website for inspiration for ideas and just see what they were writing. And I liked the way that they'd set it out, and the articles were kind of they weren't too they weren't trying to be too clever. They were kind yeah. of layman's terms. It was like, right, this is it. We, you know, they were a bit sweary. It was a kind of, it was quite refreshing. Um, and I remember thinking, Joe's a cool company, actually. Quite that's, like. that's, that's what I've always thought. It's just, yeah. I just thought they're just cool. It's just yeah, a cool, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, um, and, and the content is, you know, really just, it's cool, yeah. isn't it? It's funny and it's engaging. Cool, yeah. um, and weirdly, uh, it came up on my Twitter with uh, Nama Gary as a recommended follow, who was the head of Joe Media, head of Maxim Media. Um, so I just gave him a follow, um, not thinking anything of it and just thought, oh, this guy's a good one to follow, see what he's up to. Within 10 minutes, I got a DM saying, um, are you happy at Soccer AM? And at this oh, time, wow. I'd been there a long time. Um, I had a lot of ideas that I wanted to implement, but was unable to because, you know, ultimately I wasn't the producer of the show. Um, someone else was producing and he didn't have the same vision I had. So I was getting a little bit frustrated. I'd been there long time felt like I'd have probably achieved as much as I was going to on the show. Um, so I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm willing to come and have a chat. So, you know, a week later I met him in Shoreditch and we had a beer and told him what I wanted to do. And, um, he thought that, you know, I'd got some exciting ideas. He went, come work for us. And I was like, oh, it's a big jump. You know, I've been, that is a jump, isn't a it? jump to leave somewhere like Sky Sports you know, a show as iconic as Soccer AM to go and join a bit of an unknown entity, really, a startup. Um, but I just felt like the time was right. I had to do it, you know. I could always go think about how big that decision was. So if I think about, so I think Helen Chamberlain mm. was there for 22 years. Yeah. I think you, I'm going to say 16, 17, was, 18. Well, it was actually 19. 19. Yeah, 19, 19 years. 19, yeah. 19 years. I think Tim Lovejoy was 10, over a decade, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, that's, a lot of people's dream to work on soccer am mm. to talk about talk about soccer or football every day mm. is incredible right so such a big decision but i think one that's really paid off right with the content well, there's things so, that have yeah, yeah. oh with so the talk- opportunities that i've had this this is this is the thing for me you know um it, i was very much involved with the making of soccer am um when rob wakelin who was the um the head of sky sports vic wakelin it was his son who took over from tim now, Rob originally come from Dick and Dom, working on Dick and Dom in the bungalow. Oh, okay. So he brilliant. produced kids' telly, whereas Soccer AM wasn't ever kids' telly. It was kind of an adult show that kids would enjoy because there were so many gags and so much colour, but it was aimed at adults generally. So when Rob came in, he had very much a kids', kids TV producer head. 
Um, and it was just quite frustrating at times because we were like, no, no, let's not make it silly. Let's make it funny. It's diff- there's difference between silly yeah, and Yeah, and I'm with you on that because I don't like the slapsticky type stuff. No. But some of your... <laughs> I think about some of the interviews that you've done and <laughs> just, just, it's, it is funny. It's genuinely funny. We try to. There's yeah, a big, there is a big difference a big between difference, those. Yeah, between being silly and gunge and, you know, I'd, which, yeah, I, I crazy, can't understand. Which is not really what soccer game ever was. So, to kind of have that being brought over, and me, Tubes, and Helen being the only three originals left, and seeing it kind of change, and I was like, ah, oh, this isn't right. But to Rob's credit, he did push me in front of the in front of the screen. Was like perform act do do what you want do what you can um so with that came a lot of opportunities like going to kenya like going to afghanistan um so i'll always be grateful for that um and obviously i was uh, doing hairy strikers so i was dressed as fellaini with a big afro wig and i'd do tom daly um tom daly's dive of the week uh, i'd come out and be on the top of a diving board in speedo going what was that flashtacular and doing stuff like that and it, you know, just tongue in cheek and trying to have a bit of a, a laugh. Um, and then Fenners came in because Fenners left originally uh, and then came back and he was like, right, I need to strip it. I need to get rid of a lot of the nonsense, which is what he needed and bring him back to football, you know, um, which was fine. But it meant that a lot of the things that I was then involved with, I kind of got sidelined a little bit. You know, I wasn't doing as much on screen. I wasn't having as much input. Um, I was getting a bit frustrated with it because I had, felt like I had a lot to offer. So, um, so then it just came at the right time. Joe were like, look, come and do all these ideas that you've got, come do them for us. So yeah, after thinking on, thinking on it for about a month, probably just talking to parents, talking to my, my missus, talking to, you know, people that um, I looked up to in the industry, directors and, you know, editors and saying, like, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm not happy here, but, is this the right move? And they said, Rock, you'll only regret not going, you know? You, sometimes you just got to, sometimes you got to go for it. Uh, so, yeah, so I went back to Noel and said, look, I'm, I'm coming over. I'm going to do it. And obviously handing in my resignation was so nervous on that day, knowing that I was going to say, look, guys, I'm, I'm leaving. And I don't think everyone, anyone could actually quite believe it because I'd grown up in those offices. You know, I'd grown up on Soccer AM. Quite literally, you know, from yeah. 15, 16 work experience all the way through, you literally had grown up. The program saw you for all of yeah. that time. You know, um, 16 years old, I remember um, it was my birthday. And uh, on the show, I'd just done a sketch. I was dressed as Eminem. I'd come out of the lockers. I'd done my bit. Uh, and Tim went, right, guys, we've got a serious point here to make. Um, someone's very special birthday today. Uh, Rocky, you, you reached the sweet age of 16. Um, and they all knew that I fancied Helen. I had a little crush for Helen. I mean, who didn't? Like, I was going to say, we all, we all did, right? Helen. She's, from, she's from my neck of the woods, of course. In sport, Is she? Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, Helen, yeah. So. so anyway, so um, he said, we've got a treat for you. All the lights went down and there was a spotlight on Helen. And she started to walk over with a sexy walk and they were playing shat damn music. And she's come over and she's grabbed my face. And she's kind of gone in for a kiss. So I've lent in puck it up and she's gone rocket you sack to get off <laughs> and everyone's gone ah. so you know i'm literally there like waiting to kiss her and they've gone she's gone you sack to get off i was like oh no i can't believe it so everyone thought that was hilarious so then on my 21st birthday they went they showed the clip they went rocket remember when you turned 16 this is the clip um well it's your 21st birthday now and we've got another surprise for you so I walked onto the set, onto the orange sofas. I'm there, cameras are on. And uh, Helen, Helen grabs me and snogs me, full on. <laughs> Snog, tongue and everything. It was we- I was just like, what? So yeah, I was just like, this is just nuts. You know, I'm getting snogged. She was just waiting for you to come of age. That was it. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> I managed to get a snog Ellen Chamberlain on, on TV. Wow, I wasn't expecting uh, to get 21. that as an exclusive today. Mate, honestly. So... Uh, so yeah, a lot of a lot of fun memories, and but it was it was definitely time for me to kind of take what I'd learned from those nineteen years and put it into practice, and kind of, you know, and just believe that I could do it and believe in my ideas. What what struck me here is you've in a short short period of time we've been speaking, you've made two really big 
ballsy things in your career one at like 15 16 just to go into tim lovejoy and go i've got these ideas yeah and uh, and then be noticed in that way and obviously that and and then you know because not many people could have done that at that age so certainly wouldn't have had the the, the awareness self-awareness to have done it or the mm. knowledge about themselves just to go and go and do that and then later on when it's this great opportunity yet joe has presented itself you know you've gone let's go for it that's you know yeah. after, after a lot of years of service that sky sports you know um and and then it makes lends, makes me to think about some of the great people that you've now sort of been meeting you've been you know interviewed Mourinho you've been interviewing Jurgen Klopp I mean you, mm. you're you're right at the top there with 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 working with some, some of the big boys oh, it's been unbelievable uh, the opportunities that I've had at Joe are just I never expected as soon as soon as I got there they were like right the NFL want to do something um what what can we do uh, and I went, well, I don't really know much about the NFL. What about if it's a kind of education of me learning about the sport? They went, yeah, let's pitch that. I was like, okay. They went, have got a name? I was like, oh, I don't know, to, to NFL and back? They were like, that's brilliant. And they, they, they kind of seemed shocked, but this was just like day to day, like just coming up with ideas like that all the time. Like that was what we learned at such a, so they were like, how do you come up with so many ideas like this? And next thing I know, I'm off to New York with the New, with the New York Jets and I'm there and honestly, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done. They're, I've been to a lot of training grounds, football training grounds, Premier League, and it's all very serious. You know, it's kind of like no film in the training. You know, everyone's, there's no messing about. It's very like, you come smart, you do as you're told, blah, blah. I went to New York Jets. They had speakers the size of, you know, a small caravan pumping out hip hop music they're all the boys are dancing they're all doing these cool handshakes they're like hey man what's going on i was just like this is so cool this is so cool and i'm in it and i'm amongst it and i'm interviewing like the the quarterback and you know the main man and i'm doing he's showing me his touchdown celebration and i'm trying to imitate it with it and i was just like this is just a different world mm. and that was like that was only a couple of weeks with being in joe uh, and then i got opportunities yeah like i say to to interview pep and Jose, uh, Klopp, like you say, all of these these names. That are... I didn't realise he did Pep as well. That's amazing. Pep, Pep was um, one of the nicest guys, actually. One of the nicest guys in foot. You know, some people, they come in, they just want to get the job done. Like, obviously, there's a lot of pressure being a football manager. Um, the media side is a bit of an annoyance sometimes and a bit of a... I can imagine that. If you're... You know, if you're... You know, you're yeah. foc- they're focused on the football. They've got to get the results. They've got to spend time with their team and their and their backroom staff, and media. Because don't forget, they get a lot of stick from media. So it's not you oh, necessarily. It's just, it's, and they're thinking, oh, I've got to do stuff because yeah. I've got to keep the media so happy. Oh, I get that. So, so it's a difficult, difficult so, job there. So I always, it. whenever I go into an interview like that with a with a personality or with someone, you know, a big name, I always try and put them at ease straight away and say, look. I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible and as easy as possible for you. You know, I'm on your side here. I want to make you look good. We'll get in, we'll get out. So I kind of lay it down and say, look, if you're not happy with anything, we'll take it out. I kind of make sure that they're comfortable with the situation because I feel that the more comfortable they are, the more you're going to get out of them. So Maurizio Sarri, when he was at Chelsea, um, he was a bit of a prickly character, mainly because English wasn't his first language. He didn't really, wasn't interested in the media side of it. He smoked, he smoked so many cigarettes. He, he literally, every, every five minutes, he would have to go out for a cigarette break. He was real chain smoking stuff. I had to do two features with him. I was there, I was there for about two hours waiting for him to turn up. He came in, he did five minutes. He went, okay, that's it, done, done. Walked off. <laughs> I, got, I got one question out of him. I was like, oh, no, I've come all this way. He spent the whole day at Chelsea. And he gave me one question, one answer. Whereas Pep... He came into the room. He was like, hello, everyone. I'm Pep. Introduced himself. Lighting guys, camera guys, you know, the runners. Like, he was just going around. Hi, I'm Pep. Nice to meet you. I was just like, oh, what a class act, yeah. you know, to come in and, and, and kind of acknowledge everyone and smiley and friendly. And he was like, right, guys, what do you want from me? And I was just like, brilliant. What a man, you know. And he gave us, he gave us exactly what we wanted. It was for EA Sports. And we we're talking about um, you know, small-sided games in football and, what they do in training and stuff and he was brilliant likewise that's Klopp like you couldn't get two nicer managers modern day managers and that, that uh, that's what I was going to pick up on the modern day managers because it's it feels like you know football's taking a bit of a turn uh, or a change of direction it's about positivity yeah. the right you know 
the, the modern day manager is really different to my Sam Allardyce at Everton yeah. years ago and, and all those types of things. I've got, I've got a story about <laughs> Sam Allardyce actually. He, um, he was at Blackburn and um, I went down to film a crossbar challenge and a skill school. So we'd do the two on the day, on the same day. You'd do the first team crossbar challenge and then after lunch, you'd go and do a skill school with the academy boys. So I'm at the training ground. Sam's come over. I've done a few interviews with Sam. He'd been on the show before. And he's like, all right, Rocket. I'm like, all right, Sam. And they've got this um, table laid out with all these, um, they were like, um, ice, like drinks for performance drinks, you know, high glucose and all of that. Mm. And there was a little tiny one in a test tube, pink, bright pink, like a luminous. And I was like, oh, what, what's that then? And he went, go on, have it. Try it. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he went, go on, have it, have it, have it. I was like, you know, peer pressure. I was like, oh, Big Sam's telling me to take a drink. I'm, so I've down this kind of like, it was like a syrup. Downed it. Honestly, I started spinning out. I don't know what was in there, but I started shaking. It was like, it was just pure glucose or whatever. Oh, wow. Like, oh, All right. down, the, the, <laughs> the club doctor had to come and get me <laughs> because I was in bits. I was like, I was like, I thought, what's going on? Sam was like, are you all right? I don't think so. I had to sit down. You know, I had to, they had to wait a good hour before I could go and do skill school because I was, I was a mess. It's hilarious. So, yeah, so that was, uh, that was quite funny. But, you know, Pep would have never done that. Pep would never no. stick you up like that. That's the difference between, the, between yeah. a, an older manager and a modern day manager. Alan Osh, Sam just thought it was hilarious. Um, so, yeah, old school managers versus new school managers, I guess. Wow. <laughs> wow. But, yeah, funny. You, 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 a second ago, you, you mentioned about being in the US and uh, yeah. obviously I, I, I'm a big fan of Impractical Jokers oh right yeah <laughs> oh, how God. did all that come about I mean it's, so, I, it's just hilarious I, I love that program I was really nervous about doing that one actually more so than a lot of the football interviews because because I'm confident with the footballers I, I kind of know what I need to get out of them and but with the Impractical Jokers because they're funny guys you know you suddenly you've got this pressure on you that Am I going to be funny? Am I, you know, am I going to be able to do what they asked me to do? So it was through Comedy Central. They were releasing a new series. So it was to promote the new series. And it was Joe's kind of job to come up with something that would get views and, and kind of promote the series. So they put me forward and they said, look, we're going to send Rocket over. Um, he can do some of you, your pranks, you know, with an in-ear piece. That was the idea originally. I'd go onto the streets. The guys would be there. They'd be in my ear. And then they would be saying stuff like... Um, Oh, I'm, I'm from the UK. Uh, do you know what tea is? Or whatever, whatever it was they were going to get me to do. And I was like, okay, I'll go and give it a shot, do my best. Got there and uh, there was a weather warning. So this storm was coming in and they were like, right, we're not going to go out onto the streets now, Rocket. We're going to do a tour around the office instead. And I was like, I've come to New York for three days and you're going to give me a tour around the office. And that, that video has got to do like X amount of views. I suddenly started to panic. You know, how am I going to make this engaging? So worked out the best way of doing it was for them to set me, set me some tasks. And then I go off on my own and do them, uh, which worked quite well in the end. So that they'd set me, um, you know, I had to close talk a stranger. So I had to get up someone's face and literally speak to them like that. I had to um, never ending hug and, or handshake. So it was kind of, you know, embrace and then just hold on for 30 seconds or as long as I could. Um, another it's always one to complete oh, strangers, isn't honestly, it? That's, that's why it's so funny because you know what? A, and, the, and the tickling, the tickling one as well. <sighs> Tickle fight someone, <laughs> you know, like you don't want to mess with New Yorkers, especially like it was, it was my first time really in that environment chatting to New Yorkers. Luckily, I'd done a bit um, in the UK where I did small talk, where I'd go onto the streets and interview the general public, so I wasn't a stranger to approaching people, you know, strangers and, and trying to get them on camera. So that put me in good stead, but, oh man, trying to, trying to tickle fights. The worst one, hang up someone's phone, you know, no. oh, it was, you know, I wouldn't tolerate someone touching my phone. Like that's it's your life. That's, that's your personal property. There also some of the things you're going to be stealing it. This is it. So the last one on the list was hang up someone's phone while they're on it. I've, I kind of worked my way through the rest of them. Uh, you know, t tell someone that you farted was another one. Uh, two, I had two ladies were there and I went, Oops, I just fired it. And they looked at me in disgust. And I was like, oh no. It was another one ticked off. But yeah, the phone one went up to some lady who was on the phone, went to hang up her call, 
And she went, you touch my phone again, I will hit you. She had an umbrella and she was, she was going to smack me one. So I was like, right, I think we call it a day here. And that was it. So I, did, I managed to do like five out of six. So but, when, yeah. when, I mean, you, I, whenever I watch some practical jokes, I always think it's hilarious. I love how, how awkward it is and how, mm, how much they get away. Brilliant. You always wonder, is, is it in any way set up? Because they do get away with so much. And, well, and, but, but what you're saying is actually you really had to run the gauntlet in some yeah. respects. Yeah, oh, completely, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were lucky enough to watch a recording of one of their shows, um, which was the, ne- the day after, and it was, um, it was like a, a health and well-being um, uh, seminar. And the, the guy, one of the guys had to find people in the room that, that's name began with uh, an A-E-I-O or U, so one of the vowels. And if it didn't, he had to insult them with something that was being fed. Uh, if if they, their name did begin with a vowel, he got a point. Oh my he, God. He to, so he had to find all the vowels. Um, and some of the things that, honestly, it's hard, it, it was getting a lot harder for them because the more famous they got, the more recognised they would get. So there was a couple of people in the room that were like, you're from Practical Jokers. And then two guys would have to run in and say, look, we're filming. Can you please not bring attention to it? Um, and then, yeah, but the, the reactions they got were real, genuine. Like, but the balls are still those it, guys god it's brilliant Honestly. yeah it's so good but it also um, it was so different to what I'd, ever, I'd done before you know it was kind of was it was it kind of nice to be doing like yeah. more comedy type stuff instead of football related comedy yeah. type stuff you know because you, you, those those guys are pure entertainers in some respects yeah because obviously um you know my, my passion is football and sport but also i do love the comedy side of it uh and i do love learning about other things i i love fishing i love you know golf i love I love all these different things. So to be able to go and do something that was completely different to anything I've done was, was brilliant, you know, and uh, luckily the video turned out all right. Mm. So uh, yeah, but it was, um, they were top guys as well. You know, they had a lot of time, gave me a lot of advice and how to deal with the public and you know, not push it too far. <laughs> Otherwise you end up getting lumped. Oh yeah, I I know I know uh, I know you've got to shoot off in a second, so I, I have a couple of just just last last yeah. bits just to ask you about. But there was a, a movie premiere which I found I found <laughs> as well. Tell me tell me about that. Yeah, so um, I actually got an IMDb credit um, on um, <laughs> Dangerous Game. Yeah, it's a da- Dangerous Game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, by the way, you're going to laugh at this. I found an interview on YouTube and had twelve views. <laughs> <laughs> what from me? Yeah, for on the on the day on the, when you're on the red carpet. How funny! Twelve yeah. views. Yeah, it sounds about right. It was thirteen with mine. So, <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, Callum Best um, was starring in it, and uh, they just needed a sports presenter. And uh, this guy got in touch and was like, "Rocket, do you fancy coming and being in my film? Like, we can't pay you." It was all like shoestring budgets and. Um, but I was like, yeah, why not? I'm up for it. I'm up for anything, giving anything a go once. So, so I was got like, to be in the red carpet, and that was. So yeah, I was going, yeah, like I say, got on the red carpet, and um, and yeah, and my 15 seconds in a film uh, went to the premiere. That was good. It's great. Brilliant. You know, it's good fun. Just another thing, really, just to try, and you know, I don't think I've got an acting career to be honest, but it was just fun to be a part of it and get involved, really. And now, what does sort of the future hold now for you? Because you've been at Sky, you've been presenting, you've, you've tried, mm. your, tried your hand at the movies, you've been working more of the comedy scene with, with kind of impractical jokers. Where, where would you like to see well, I'm really your, enjoying, your career go? I'm really enjoying, uh, well, recently I've been working um, quite heavily on um, Liquid Football, which is a podcast um, which is presented by Kelly Cates. And we have regular guests like Wayne Bridge, Steve Sidwell, Carlton Cole. Sean Wright Phillips and a few others, uh, Lewis Garcia, uh, Wes Brown. Um, so I've been enjoy, I've enjoyed kind of creating challenges and, and creating good engaging content with them. Um, I did, uh, did one just before lockdown with, uh, we played Kirby, um, okay. with two of the guys and did over a million views. Um, uh, and it's just two lads playing Kirby. But the thing is a bit of nostalgia, you know, there was competition. It just ticked all the boxes. You're, you're talking about you get the ball and you need to hit yeah. the, the curb. You're the side, God, I used to play that. I used to play yeah. it with all my, my friends in the street. It's just a game that the kids don't play anymore. Um, and then you know, the car would come past. You'd hit the car. That's it. Quickly. Car, yeah, yeah. <laughs> double points for going over a car. And then if you, if you caught it on the bounce, it would be double points. You go into the middle and all of that. But yeah, I used to be, I used to be, a, I used to love Kirby as a kid. I used to love that game. But, um, but like I say, like, I was speaking to a few of the younger 
guys in the office. You know, you're 22 year olds, 23 year olds, never heard of it. Or the, and the strange they've, thing is they've been robbed. I know completely. But some of the older lads in the office were like, oh, we used to call it curbs or we used to call it, um, they had, everyone had different names and different rules, which just fascinated me. Mm. So, um, Kevin Nolan was, when he came in as a guest, he was, he was due to play it. And, um, I was like, right, we're going to play Kirby. He was like, yeah, I know Kirby. And he had the same rules that I had as a kid. And I was like, oh, brilliant. That's so good to hear that someone else had the same rules as me. Um, and we played it and yeah, it did, did good numbers. So things like that, just producing kind of engaging and fun content. That's, that's what I get a buzz out of at the moment. I like, I like making people smile, you know, it's a lot of misery and it's a lot of, uh, like I said, like, like life can be tough. And so if I can make someone smile for 30 seconds or a minute, you know, I feel like I've done, I've done good in the world. I've, I've put a smile on someone's face, you know, and that's it really. I get a buzz out of that. So hopefully I can just continue doing that really. Uh, and getting to spend some time with Mason and, you know, bringing him up and into the football world and, and getting, sharing experiences with him. That's all I hope really the future holds. And, and hopefully one day he'll go and put on a red shirt and you'll make, you'll make daddy, daddy really proud. And that, <laughs> yeah. that'll, that'll cause a riot with sure, your, it just... your city fan wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, um, just looking, you know, just looking forward to what, what the future holds and uh, doing more of what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, Rocket, it's, it's been a real pleasure in talking to you and Thanks, growing, growing up, I, I saw you on TV so many times. So having, having to have the opportunity to have a chat with you, this work this early into my little journey, by the way, of just, just doing a few podcasts, no, and, brilliant, uh, mate. everything else. It's, it's been a real pleasure. Unbelievably. And it, I suppose there's probably a li- little thing there, which is, I never knew for a second that you, you were connected just one person away via Ross, Yeah, <laughs> which is, which is incredible really. Just yeah, how, how yeah. close, how close people can be connected. That's it. See, uh, um, I've always been in Frimley Green, um, in Cambly and, uh, my parents were friends with Ross's parents. And then we obviously got to know each other, um, through them. Uh, and then we've stayed in touch for years. So, uh, he said, you, you're doing your podcast. So I was, I was happy to help mate. And you guys played football together. You played left yeah. back and he was right back is that That's, right was yeah, he the way yeah. around? no i was always left back yeah i, I watched the earlier podcast where you was uh saying no one wants to be a right back uh, <laughs> no one wants to be gary neville um but yeah i um because i was i was left footed um or i am left footed um i just kind of fell into the position um strangely enough i actually um i played with ross played um a pub for a pub team with ross um played for Cambly boys um and we used to play a team called Collier's Wood. And it was always Cambly boys and Collier's Wood who were fighting for the top spot. And in Collier's Wood's team, they had Steve Sidwell uh, and Liam oh. Britton. Yeah. So um, I actually played for the league representative team as left back with Steve Sidwell and Leon Britton. So uh, I played, played with them in a team. Uh, and yeah, they obviously went on and became Premier League footballers. Uh, and I went a different way. Mm. But, um, but, yeah. but, but what a great journey you've gone I think you've lived a lot of people's dreams you certainly live, live my dream and some of the people yeah. you've spoken to and what you've worked on and Soccer AM and then you know spending time with all these different footballers and managers so I have been oh. very lucky I must say I have been lucky in the fact that you know being in the right right place at the right time but also luck, luck you, doesn't, you, you have to engine you have to work you, hard you, you have but, to, but that's the thing you made that happen because although yeah. you might think oh I just made this one comment to Tim Mm. But actually, you had to have the foresight to even get in there in the first place to sort ask for that work experience in that place. You know, get to the last day because people could have just walked out, yeah. and 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 then just come up continuously come up with the ideas, although you're being put under pressure. Um, yeah. So it's, it's it's no doubt a tiny bit of luck, but it's it's not really because it says all this graft and everything else, all the work that you've done along the way. So um, yeah, oh, well done. I mean, I mean it's that. just a, such a no. great journey, and I I really hope anyone who listens to this. You know, if they're coming up and they're they're, sort of they're, they're they're in their teenage years and they're thinking, God, I really want to get into TV or I really mm. want to take that chance to do something, just shows you've got to do it. That's it. Um, Don't take no for an answer. Just keep trying. Keep yeah. Keep on the way. And something it will happen in the end. You will get an opportunity. you just um, got to gotta get on the right ladder early. That's it. What it is that you want to go after and just say, well, whatever, you know, the goods will come later, but try and just get into something you really love. And I used to, you know, sometimes going, on, like going live on TV after an hour's sleep, trying to remember words like i would shit myself i would be so <laughs> nervous and that that, that ner- those nerves never went like i would still get nervous even like after doing it for six seven years i would still have butterflies mainly because i cared and i wanted it to be good and i didn't want to let anyone down so i think 
my kind of message to any youngsters out there would be, don't be scared to give it a go. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You can fail, but you learn from it. And you, you know, just try. You can't, the worst thing is to not try. So um, that's it really, yeah, just give it a go and, and learn from your mistakes. Okay, I, I feel like we've only really scratched the surface and I could really talk, <laughs> talk to you for, for a lot of time yet. So we'll have to do but, another one, Sorry. I'll say, yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, go off. Let Mason can grow up a bit. You can yeah. come back and tell That's me all it. about when he comes out to mummy saying, I'm a red. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah. that, that can be the, uh, the theme for the next show. Love that, mate. Brilliant. Oh, top Thank man. you Thanks so for much me. for chatting today. I appreciate it. you. Take Cheers, care. Cheers, mate. Thanks Good for listening, guys. Bye-bye.